I start the recording now. This is our first session in viewing the history uh, topics. In history topics this quarter, we already studied two sections and sorry, two chapters. We have three chapters in chapter, uh, sorry, we have three sections in chapter 21, and you have two other sections in chapter 22. In chapter 21, we already finished these three topics, the highlighted with green, about Spain and the European absolutism. Section number two is the reign of Louis XIV, and section number three is Central European Monarchs and the clash between Central European Monarchs. These are the three sections that we studied in, in chapter 20, 21. Okay, so we are going to start it today by the first two topics about Spain and France, about Spain's empire and European solidism, and second section is about the reign of Louis XIV. We have a question huh? now. Okay, we are the first one to enter the session. Okay, because you are uh, punctual, Sihan. You are committed and you are good students. That's why you are the first one to join the session. Okay, so uh, today we are going to, to review the first two topics about Spain and also about the reign of Louis XIV of France. So I will start sharing another session, another one. This one. Yes. So when it's start sharing, this one. the first topic was about Spain's empire and European absolutism. It was the first lesson that we studied at the beginning of the quarter. Also, we have here on the top right corner of the skills booklet on this page, we have some terms and definitions and some names. The first person and the first definition here or the first term and name here is Philip II. Philip II was a Spanish king who took control of Portugal, but failed in his invasion of England. We have, may have a question here, who was Philip II? This is the answer for this question. And also we have a full detailed answer that we are going to cover in this page also. Second point or second term is absolute monarch is king or queen with complete control, with complete control. The divine right is the idea that a ruler receives the right to rule from God. Okay, these are the most, the three most important terms and definitions in this section. Here, if we wanted to review and also to um, make up all of these points in this section, we have some questions here in your skills booklet and also all of the topic and all of the section has been summarized in just the two pages. The first one is that the Charles X of Spain ruled the Holy Roman Empire and other European countries in 1556, he lifted the throne and split his holdings. His brother Ferdinand received Austria and the Holy Roman Empire. His son, Philip II, put Spain and its colonies. Yes, this is a question. Who was Philip II? The highlighted points here or the highlighted lines is the answer for this question. So who was Philip II? He was Charles V's son. Philip II got Spain and its colonies. Philip II expanded his holdings by taking control of Portugal when the king of Portugal died without an heir. And here, Philip also could also get its global territories in Africa, India, and in the East Indies. He tried also to invade England. This is Philip II. This is the answer, the full detailed answer for this question. Who was Philip II? In 1588, he tried to invade England, though he failed. He defeated. The defeat made Spain weaker, and also, however, Spain still seemed strong because of the wealth, gold, silver that flowed in the form and from colonies in the Americas. Okay, this is the first part in this section. Second part, and also it's extremely important part in this section, is that we have a question here. Who were some of the artists and writers of the Spain Golden Age? This is the question. Okay, sorry, there is this one. This is the question. Who were some of the artists and writers of the Spain Golden Age? Here, Spain's great wealth allowed monarchs and the nobles to become patrons of arts. Those two of the greatest artists of the 16th and 17th century were El Greco and Diego Velasquez. 
These are two great artists as the times of the Spain's golden age. The Greek work reflected the face of Spain during this period. The paintings of Velasquez reflected the pride of Spanish monarch. We may have another question on this point. What is the difference between the kind and the style of art between El Greco and Diego Velasquez? The answer for this question is that El Greco work reflected the fate of Spain during this period, and the paintings of Velasquez reflected the pride of the Spanish monarchy. The third writer, or the third one who flourished at the time of Spain's golden age was Miguel de Cervantes. Who wrote Don Domingo de la Mancha, which featured in the first of the modern European novel? Also, we may have a question here: Who wrote Don Domingo de la Mancha? Miguel de Cervantes. Okay. What was significant, significant about Miguel de Cervantes? He was the writer of Don Domingo de la Mancha, which featured the first of the modern European novel. These two questions that may that you may have in the exam. The novel tells the story of a Spanish nobleman who reads too many books about heroic lives. There is no need to know what is Don Duque de la Mancha is about, but you must know who was the writer of this uh, first trial of novels and also when it was closer. Okay, here is also right, the Spanish weekends. What weakened Spain, Spanish Empire? Also, the question, the direct question here is to answer, is the highlighted part and also the highlighted lines is the answer for this question. Here is, we have a question here, but it is in the second column, is that. Why did Spain lost its power? So to answer this question, we must go directly to this paragraph, is that. Spain's new world led to some serious problems, the prices of goods constantly rose. This is the first reason. Unfair taxes kept the poor from building up any wealth of their own. Number three is that Spanish kings had to borrow money from banks in foreign countries. And also Spain lost land. Seven provinces of the Spanish Netherlands rose in protest against the high taxes and attempts to crush. This is a complete answer for this question. Why did Spain lost its support? Again, the prices of goods constantly rose, unfair taxes, Spanish kings had to borrow money from banks in foreign countries, and Span Spain lost land, seven provinces in Spanish Netherlands rose against, rose protest against the high taxes and attempts to crush Protestantism in Netherlands. These are the reasons why Spain lost land and lost its support. The last point here is about absolutism. Through the loss of Dutch positions, Philip continued to hold tight control over Spain. He wanted to control the lives of his people. Philip and others who ruled in the same way were called absolute monarchs. What did the absolute monarchs believe? They believed in the holding all power they also believed in the divine right. This is the idea that ruler receives the right to rule from them. We have a question here. Right. We have a question here. It is from Siham. There will be a video uploaded on YouTube. Yes, of course. This recorded video will be uploaded to the YouTube. Yeah, another one is that there will be, yeah, it will be uploaded there. Don't worry about that. So you can reverse back all of this video to uh, not to miss anything and also to review what we have studied today. But it doesn't mean that you want, I don't want you to miss any fruitful uh, result from this online discussion. Because I think those who were in the online session totally differs from those who will view this video on the YouTube. Okay, what is spread unrest in Europe in the 17th century led to an increase in absolute rule or absolutism and its restrictions. 
absolute rulers used their increased power to impose order. They wanted to free themselves from the limitations imposed by the nobility and the government budget. Another question. Okay, from where I can get these videos on the YouTube? Just the search on the YouTube channels of the, of the Latif. In the search bar, just write American school or American, uh, Masri American. You will get into the channel of the American school. You will find all of the videos that were uploaded there. Okay, so I can send you the link to this uh, YouTube channel. I will send it in the, in, a method, in the message on Jupyter or I can send it on the group tomorrow. Okay, so now let's summarize what we have finished in this section. Also, we have these three questions. We will answer these questions in details uh, after we finish browsing what we have studied in this section. Okay, here is the first part here is that the powerful Spanish Empire, a new Spanish ruler in 1556, Philip II begins ruling Spain and its positions. Philip II's empire, Philip seizes Portugal in 1580s. Gold and silver from Americans make the Spanish extremely wealthy. Defender of Catholicism. Philip defends Catholicism against the Muslims and the Protestants. Spanish fleet helps defeat Ottomans at Lepanto in 1571. Spanish Armada defeated by British in 1588. El Greco and Vlasquez. El Greco uses unusual style to convey religious themes. As we said, he reflected the face of the Spanish Empire. Works of Las Cruz show his Spanish court life. Okay, he reflected the life of the monarch and also the, the royal family. Don de Wixot, in 1605, Don de Wixot by Miguel de Cervantes is published. Novel marks birth of modern European novel. Inflation in Texas. Inflation weakens the Spanish economy. Taxes and the lower class prevent development of middle class. Making Spain's enemies rich, Spaniards buy goods abroad, making Spain's enemies rich because most of the wealth that came and flowed from the Spanish American colonists directly were, unloaded, were downloading all of its riches on the borders and on the harbors of the Spain's enemies to pay the debts that they had to pay. Philip the Great declared bankruptcy three times and to weak the economy. The Dutch revolt, Protestants in Netherlands when independence from Spain in 1579, and also they started and they created their own republic. That was the difference between Dutch and Spain at this time, because Spain was a monarch and was a kingdom, but once the Dutch um, won their independence, they created the first republic in Europe. A different society, Netherlands is a republic and practices religious toleration. Dutch art in 16, Netherlands becomes center of European art. Rembrandt and Vermeer are famous Dutch painters. Dutch trading empires, that's why Dutch be flourished after the weakening of the Spanish, uh, Spanish kingdom, is that Dutch merchants engage in world trade. Dutch have world's largest trading fleet, Dutch replaced Italians as European bankers. Okay. Absolutism, the theory of absolutism, rulers wanted to absolute to be absolute monarchs, rulers with complete power, believe in divine right, idea that monarchs represent the God on earth, growing power on Europe's monarchs, decline of Feudalism, rise of cities, help a monarchs gain power. Decline any church authority also increases power. Crisis lead to absolutism. The 17th century is a period of great upheaval. Monarchs impose orders by increasing their own power. Okay, so now to go back to the first slide, we have three questions here. The first one is that, what is the significance of England's defeat of the Spanish Armada? These three questions were already answered during the class sessions, during as a class work in the sessions, and also we can view all of them now. 
here. Just a second. Yeah, so now, this is section number one from your original book. Okay, if you remember the question is that what was significant about the defeat of the Spanish Armada? Yeah. This was the map of the Spanish Armada, as you know, it started from Spain. It starts from Spain here and to the border of Spain, then around England, around Ireland and Scotland. And once they were defeated, they go back again to Spain. So now, this is the answer. Elizabeth had supported Protestant subjects who had rebelled against the Philip. However, his fleet was defeated. Although this setback seriously weakened Spain, its walls gave the appearance of strength for a while longer. Yeah, we have a question here from Omar. I have got to get off the internet crash, and my data is too slow for my to join the session. You can follow us up, uh, Omar, on the YouTube channel, but please send me the link to the file, the folder that you created for your friend's video. Okay, so second question was. Why did Dutch revolt against Spain? Who is the answer? That the Dutch had little in common with their Spanish rulers. Ex extremely important question, guys. Why Dutch revolt against Spain? The answer is that the Dutch had little in common with their Spanish ruler because Spain were Catholic and the Netherlands had many Calvinists or Protestant. Also, Spain had a sluggish economy, while the Dutch had a prosperous middle class. As you remember, in, the, in Spain, it has a sluggish economy, which means you have only two classes, the noble and the richest class, and the most of the people and the majority of people were common people and also were poor people. But in the Dutch community, they have the middle class. That's also a bigger difference, a big difference. Philip raised taxes in the Netherlands and the took steps. Okay, this meeting will end in 10 minutes. So we will finish this section and we'll start another uh, meeting for the second section. Philip raised taxes in the Netherlands and the took steps to crush Protestantism. This is the answer for question number two. Question number three. Why did absolute monarchs believe that they were justified in exercising absolute power? The theory of absolutism. So this is the answer for the theory of absolutism. These rulers wanted to be absolute monarchs. Okay. Kings or queens who held all of the power within their state's boundaries, this goal was to control every aspect of society. Absolute monarchs believed in divine right, the idea that God created the monarchy and that the monarch acted as God represented on earth. An absolute monarch answered only to God, not to his or her sons. So now, so far, any questions related to question, section number one? Yeah, can you please say the question again? Again, the question. Again, in just a couple of minutes. Again, Sehan, these are the questions. I think you now, I shared this, uh, this screen with you now. These are the three questions that you already answered as a class work and the class session. What is the significance of the England's defeat of the Spanish Armada? And why did the revol Dutch revolt against Spain? 
and why did absolute monarchs believe that we are justified in exercising absolute power? Okay, the three questions again. The first one, what was significance about the defeat of Spanish Armada? This is the answer for question number one. I have to yeah. Is that Elizabeth had supported Protestant subjects who had rebelled against the Philip? However, his fleet was defeated. Although this setback seriously weakened Spain, its walls gave the appearance of strength of for a while longer. The second question, and also one of the most important questions in this section, is that why the Dutch revolt against Spain? For these four reasons. The first one is that the Dutch had little in common with their Spanish rulers. The second reason is that Spain had a sluggish economy, while the Dutch had a prosperous middle class. The third reason is that Philip raised taxes in the Netherlands and they took steps to crush Protestantism. The third question is that, why did absolute monarchs believe that they were justified in exercised absolute power? Why they believed in the uh, divine right? This is the summary of this question. These rulers wanted to be absolute monarchs, kings or queens who held all of the power within the state's boundaries. Their goal was to control every aspect of society. Absolute monarchs believed in divine right, the idea that God created the monarchy and that the monarch acted as God's representatives on earth. And absolute monarchs answered only to God, not to his or her subjects. You can also refer back to the YouTube channel and reverse any point in this video. Okay, so, so far, do you have any questions in section number one? Because I will stop recording and also will start another session and another recording for section number two. Any questions, guys? No, thank you. Any questions for the others? Abdurrahman, and Abdurrahman, Omar, any other questions? Okay, no thanks. Okay, so I will stop recording now.